Welcome on into the Stock Trends channel today. We got our trend day to the downside and we actually broke below the prior lows of earlier this week and closed below those lows as now all eyes start to focus on our next big time catalyst. And actually, today's video we're gonna talk about why that catalyst is really meaningful this time around because of what came out and what data we've actually just gotten and what data we usually get on Thursday. So welcome on in guys. We're going to be diving right into today's charts. Like always, no bias, no BS. Hope this video gives you something of value. And if it does, consider subscribing and sharing with a friend. And so we're going to start off with what's going on right now. Here's the S&P. I'll pull this up to a bigger picture chart so you guys can kind of get a bigger picture view of what's happening. Not a great look, but again, you know, still above the trend line, breakout, you know, all that great stuff over 4,000. Underneath 4,000, I think starts to kind of shift the sentiment back down to the downside. But again, it is seemingly controlled in terms of our downside selling. We do have a downtrend. It's a small one. And then, you know, maybe some of you don't really care about this and maybe some do, but I figure we mention it at least for now at a minimum before we continue on. And that would be here on the daily chart on the S&P. You know, roughly something like this is our downtrend that we're seeing right now. So, Lower highs are building in, um, also lower lows, but a breakout looks like on the S&P up over 4160, 41, I mean, over that level, 4150 technically by tomorrow as each of these kind of candles will now shift to the right. 4150 is a spot above that, and we could be looking at a flag break to the upside for new highs on the year, potentially. Now, the catalyst to do it is gonna be next week. We'll talk about that here in one second, but let's set the stage. So, setting the stage, Obviously, if you go back to past videos, we got a really good picture of what's going on. You know, we have that golden cross that we talk about right here. It's setting up nice and clean. Here is some of the economic data. We got jobless claims. This is where I think a lot of eyes are now going to be shifting uh, as we've been seeing it in the media a lot more. And after last week, the first week of February, we had some really impressive job numbers that seemingly surprised everybody uh, over the past, you know, Oh, really, based off what, we're, what you're seeing and what you're maybe you hearing compared to what the numbers are showing. Now, it seems like across financial media, you are seeing company after company after company every single day that is laying off employees, 10%, 20%, 10,000 employees here, 20,000 there. You're seeing these numbers. Now, a lot of them started in the big tech names, but it's starting to bleed into other companies as well. So, what starts to, you know, you start to think, okay, this job market, man, and, you know, we're seeing some, we're seeing some stuff and maybe hearing some stuff, you know, you're starting to have those experiences with friends and family and out and about, oh, you're hearing that person just lost their job, this person lost their job, but the job numbers keep coming in strong. And why is that the case? Well, if you read deeper into the lines here and you look at other data points, you'll actually see that there's a lot more uh, part-time jobs uh, and people are potentially losing their main gig and then going and getting that second part-time job or that part-time job or adding that other part-time job on top of their current one or their main gig because they can't afford uh, to pay ends meet. So that's kind of partially what's going on. Is it a bigger story of what's to come? Is it a bigger deal? It probably is, but again, it takes time for this to play out because just because someone loses their job today doesn't mean the economy is screwed and that everything is done and we have to go to zero on the S&P tomorrow. Okay, that's kind of the, the, the mindset that the bearish folks um, really wanna push. But in reality, what happens? You lose your job. You start taking on credit card debt, we're seeing that already. You start maxing cards out. Once you, start, you can't pay the cards, you stop spending money, then you sell the house. And so there's a snowball and it all takes its time, right? This is just general, obviously, everyone has different situations, but that's kind of the look. So job numbers came in a bit higher than, they came in with a 196,000 initial jobless claims, which again, a higher number here is not good, meaning that more people are coming in and saying, hey, I don't have job, okay? Uh, 183 was last week and the 190, uh, was the expectation. Okay. So with that set, we are now looking at the CPI going into next week. Okay. And so we want to mention this because when we look at the CPI going into next week, what you'll see is this trending to the downside. I was seeing some numbers coming in at around a 6.2 or so was the consensus from what I've been seeing across other outlets. So uh, the forecast here from Trading Economics has been very high and has not been accurate the past couple months, but some of the consensus views have been around 6.2 that I've seen. So we're looking around 6.2. If we get anything under 6.2, let's be honest here, 
the the talk of a soft landing is going to continue to gain momentum. Why? What's a soft landing? A soft landing is going to be the Fed actually getting inflation down towards their 2% target with minimal impacts, minimal, let's say negative impacts, or as, as, as little as possible. Obviously, you're already seeing layoffs, you're already seeing things, and there will be more to come due to the lags of policy, right? Fed raises rates today or tomorrow or last month, whatever, last week. And that doesn't really, you know, boil down to anything for weeks, months, quarters down the road, right? It takes time for these effects to infiltrate the economy. So that's the talk. So really we're coming in and we're saying, hey, if we come in with a 6.5, that's not going to be a great look because that's going to say, oh, wait a second, you know, our downtrend is no longer, it's kind of flatlining here. That's concerning. Fed, higher rates, longer rates, you know, higher, longer, that whole thesis argument. And you'll, you'll probably even see potentially the bond market react in some sort of way there as well. So that's something to keep in mind. That's the big catalyst next week on Valentine's Day, the morning of Valentine's Day. You'll be woken up with, uh, you know, especially if on the, you're on the, uh, the West Coast, you'll be, you'll be waking up to a massive market reaction depending upon, you know, what happens off the CPI. So keep an eye on that. Uh, the jobs numbers are important now. They kind of go hand in hand here because it kind of gives you that soft landing or hard landing narrative that is being tossed around. So with that said, let's dive into some other stuff, okay? So let's pull up the 10-year. The 10-year has actually done exactly what you'd want to see if you want, if you're making bets that rates are going to go higher. So the 10-year got above this 3.6 level, this white box right here, okay? And what it has now done is it pulled back and actually has bounced right off of that 3.5, around that 3.6 level. So it's building higher lows, now building, you know, support, I guess, technically over prior resistance, and it's stair-stepping to the upside, making nice progress. It's headed higher. It looks like if it can get, to, if we get up over 3.7, 3.8 is in the cards next here on the 10-year. Again, big, big eyes are going to be on, or a lot of eyes, I guess, eyes or eyes, uh, are going to be on that CPI, right, for the reaction. We've seen a lot of the situation, though, where if the CPI comes in at 6.3 or right in line with expectation, make it a spike in the 10-year, and then it right dump, or you might get a dip and then a rip. It, it kind of tends to maybe backtrack or completely unwind the initial move. So just like anything else we've been seeing this year, the first move may not be the <laughs> the correct move. It may actually be a fake out move. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of fake outs, it seems like, in the markets as of late. So that's a 10-year. Let's jump over to the dollar. Uh, what's the dollar? Dollar, a little weak, little weak. And then now it kind of bounced back. So again, right in the middle of this range, this is an area of resistance as it was a prior support. Here on the dollar, this is DXY, the dollar currency index, the US dollar currency index, above 104, right up here, above the, above the high on from Tuesday of this week, is going to send the dollar potentially higher. And that is more concerning for, let's say, risk on assets, for, let's say, Bitcoin, for, let's say, the precious metals in general, right? Just generally speaking. So watching that closely. However, if this ends up breaking back, back to the downside, we will most likely... If this area ends up confirming as a, you know, support turn resistance, we're very likely going to go down towards $100, if not lower, on the dollar, uh, as that would signal lower highs continuing, and then we'd expect a lower low if the trend were to continue. So we're watching that closely, although, right, the potential is for a breakout here and a hold above this 103, which it's currently kind of doing right now, uh, and so we're watching that one into next week pretty closely, okay? So that's a look at the 10-year yields. Uh, look at the dollar. Let's talk about some stocks, some crazy action on some stocks. First off, Tesla, we'll pull up Tesla. It's been a very hot uh, topic as of late. And if you pull up Tesla's chart, what you'll notice is that this thing has been an absolute monster. It, the thing is red now for like two weeks straight every single day. It's like, oh, actually green. Sorry, I'm saying red. It was red for like two weeks straight. Now it's been green. There's one red day here. You got to go back to January 20th. Since then, since January 20th, there's been one red day. One red day on Tesla. Believe it or not, pretty impressive stuff um, for Tesla. Now, Tesla potentially putting in uh, a, a little bit of a, a nice upper wick right here up to about almost two, it got to 214, almost 215 today. And then slight, slight gap to fill back down towards 203 or so, the highs of Wednesday. But Tesla right now is now above this key spot of 200 hours, the psychological level, prior resistance turn support, or prior support that turn resistance now is acting as resistance. 
and now potentially support. So we're watching that $200 level here on Tesla. Next spot to watch is up here towards that 200 moving average and that 230. Again, probably not going to get there until after CPI if we get there. Okay, again, CPI comes out on Tuesday of next week and then we can have a better feel for the reaction the market's gonna make if we're gonna react downside or if we're gonna keep going higher and then that's the next target to watch on Tesla. So keep that in mind. Another stock that there's gonna be some more um, stuff on the chart had a recent trade on, on this stock this week, but take a look at this end phase. This chart doesn't look too great, although it had a decent bounce back here on uh, was this Thursday from where it was, but not surprising. It came down towards the low of the year and then bounced. So not surprising there, but this has been a nasty looking chart had earnings had a huge gap up opened the day after earnings on we had on Wednesday massively higher. Been on Wednesday, closed at around 229. It opened up around over 246 on the next day, on, on Wednesday. Sold off completely, did a nasty bearish engulfing where it completely engulfed the prior like three days of price action. <laughs> okay. And then now it actually broke below this trend line, which wasn't a super big trend line. It was a line that I just had extended out because I'm like, hey, let's, let's see if this line makes any sense. And it actually worked out nicely because technically speaking, if I zoom in, this trend line actually was where we bounced on Wednesday on the back on the backside move. We bounced pretty much right at that trend line that we extend from the lows, these wicks on end phase to finish off January. Okay. Now we're below that trend line and we have a gap to fill to the downside. So in terms of end phase, especially with market weakness, we're looking for this type of target down here under 200 bucks down towards 195 would fill this gap from back in July. Could go lower, um, but this stock is obviously much weaker than let's say a Tesla and much weaker than the overall S&P 500 the past two months, month and a half, really since the new year began. Um, it's been weak, even though it's been strong, strong stock. Don't get me wrong. This stock has been one of the strongest stocks throughout the bear market. Look at it. It's, it I mean, it's, it's essentially within striking distance of all time highs. It's down a lot now, I guess, from where it was, but the trend and the trajectory since 2020 is beautiful. And it's right there. You'd think, okay, a couple of months and this thing could be right back at highs if, you know, positive earnings and whatnot and positive market. But um, finally showing some weakness now on Enphase. Now, last thing I want to mention here today, which is really important, I think, because it's actually potentially going to provide some opportunities, is going to be Coinbase. Now, I'm not here to sit there and, and, and tell you, oh yeah, buy Coinbase. It's not what we do here. We don't talk about that. And, and you have to make your own calls, your own decisions at the end of the day. Uh, that's, that's on you. And at the same time, it's much, much, much better, much better. Uh, when you do it yourself, because you can learn from your own mistakes so much faster than relying upon somebody else to tell you what to do. So if we look at Coinbase, right, thing got crushed, don't get me wrong, but there's something suspicious here, not suspicious, but it's something useful. So if I go to Coinbase's, let's say the one month chart, what we notice here is Coinbase, after making the high up to about 80, it was at $87, almost 88 bucks back on Friday, February 3rd, about a week ago now, trending lower. Okay, cool. Today at the open, Coinbase opens up and immediately dumps from like 70, almost like $69 all the way down to like 64. And then it finishes the day under 60 bucks. Okay. But here's what's interesting. If I go over here and I were to overlay good old BTC. Okay. If I overlay Bitcoin futures, I'm just going to overlay the continuous contract just so we can kind of get a feel. Actually, I got to redo this. I'll do a new price scale. Boom. Okay, here we go. What you'll notice is if I zoom in, yes, Bitcoin has been trending lower. Okay, this is overlaying them across the same time span. So Bitcoin has also been trending lower, right? Fair enough. Makes sense. They kind of trade to some degree, you know, in line. But this big move down in Coinbase, like that's a big move compared to what we've been seeing was the precursor for the really big dump that we saw in Bitcoin in the second half of the day, like really big. Bitcoin is sitting here, okay, at around, what is that on the left-hand side? Bitcoin's at like 22.5. It goes from 22.5 all the way down to 20, uh, to sub 22, which is a pretty big percentage move on Bitcoin right in that, you know, two hour time span, not even. But it was almost set up by Coinbase, right? The Coinbase chart, gave you the signs, the warning signs, the first hour of the day. So it's something to watch. And if you zoom back to the left, right, what you'll also note is this. 
Coinbase has actually made some nice moves before Bitcoin has made its big extensions up and down. So take a look at this. Go back to the left, right? Coinbase goes from $36 a share back here, in January, all the way to 50 bucks. It's a big percentage move, right? And Bitcoin grinds higher with it. But the big move on Bitcoin came right here. Huge, huge after that. Same idea here as it kind of gone higher, higher, higher. Coinbase starts making a big move. Then Bitcoin makes a big move as well. Now Coinbase makes a big move down. Bitcoin, of course, down trending, but makes its big move down about an hour or two after Coinbase makes its big move down. So something to watch. I've been noticing it closely and I figured I'd mention it because it could provide opportunity for you in the future. I remember seeing that today. I didn't take advantage of a Bitcoin short. Looking back, totally could have. Seeing that today, I was like, huh. Bitcoin doesn't seem like it's down as much as I would think, given how much Coinbase is down, given the S&P at the time was actually green on the day. It finished red, but it was green on the day. So just kind of comparing, you know, relative strength and weakness the past couple of days across these guys could be useful to you and it might actually help you out. So if you got something out of the video, thumbs up button, consider subscribing here to the channel. Leave any stocks you want us to cover in this weekend's video down below in the video comment section. Please, please go ahead and do that so we can cover some video or some stocks that you guys have been asking or you want to look at. On top of that, this platform right here is TradingView. If you want to check out TradingView, check them out. There'll be a link to TradingView in the video description box and pinned comment down below. We use the premium version. There are free versions and there are 30-day free trials if you want to check out some of the cool features that you get access to with TradingView. We use them every freaking day. So thanks so much and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.